Hello, this is Breakfast with Sean Williams and Bill Turnbull. All 29 men trapped in a New Zealand mine since Friday are now believed to be dead. Good morning, it's Wednesday the 24th of November. Also ahead, huge reform. We're also talking this morning about rail fares, uh, planned price increases coming into effect. What will commuters be doing about that? And don't forget the ashes will be starting tonight, so Chris is going to be looking ahead to the first test in Brisbane. Karen. Good morning to you. First, our main news this morning. Police in New Zealand, South Island say there is now no hope of finding survivors from the mining accident in which 29 men were trapped underground. We're reporting there and uh, we'll be talking to the Education Secretary Michael Gove about all this at 10 past 7. A series of spending cuts and tax rises will be announced today by the Irish government to try to rescue who joins us from Perugia this morning. So, Duncan, they're going to be focusing on the DNA evidence. Thank you very much, Duncan. Duncan Kennedy joining us from Italy there from Perugia. Look it out there. His name's Joe Robbins. Good so, that, is that an omen? No. Well, we as long as there aren't women in the Australian exactly. side, it should be all right. OK, exactly. uh, thanks very much. Uh, the papers, uh, the New Zealand story broke too late for them. A lot of them leading on the royal... Uh, the Sun are saying, thank you, Your Highness. Uh, same story on the front page of the Mirror. Eight days off, wedding holes Oof. bonanza. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Times has a big... Looking memories of his mother there. Mm. Have you got any inside pages? Oh, yes, Go we on, have. Then. Hang on. I, oh, no. I know, because oh, I've lost no. mine. OK, here's what, not, do yours. here's what not to do when you're visiting a museum yep. and they show you an artifact that is affecting the markets mm -hmm. and half an hour's time. All right. Thanks, Simon. 22 minutes past six. This is breakfast. These are the main stories this morning. Oh, OK, thank you. A wedding is always a momentous occasion for the happy couple and their families, but the marriage next April of Prince William to Kate Middleton will affect, of course, all of us. Everybody. It's on April the 29th and there's going to be a public holiday to celebrate the event. It's widely thought that'll be good for tourism and boost the economy. Phil Lavelle joins us from Westminster Abbey this morning. Phil, thanks thank very you. much. Thanks. In a few moments, we'll get a full summary of the main news. And Chris is going to be here with the sport, including the latest from Brisbane, as England prepare to defend the ashes at the Gabba. Mm. What a name for a ground. <laughs> Time now, though, to get the news, weather and travel where you are. See you in a couple of minutes. Good morning. This is Breakfast with Sean Williams and Bill Turnbull. Good morning. Welcome to the programme. Later on, we're discussing the impact of January's increase in train fares, looking at whether it'll force commuters back into their cars. We're catching up with one of Britain's best-loved children's TV stars, Brian Cant, presented Play School for 21 years and is to be honoured with a special BAFTA for his work. We've got Martin Fry from ABC. He's going to be joining us to tell us what inspired him to write his chart-topping 80s hits and how you can hear him sing live again. After nine, we'll be joined by the comedy duo Armstrong and Miller about the many characters they've taken on their tour and about their new book and about their very inaccurate representation of, of breakfast, breakfast television. Oh, yes. We'll hold them to task. We will. Yes. But now, with the time at 6.33, let's bring you an update on what's been happening in the news because police in New Zealand say there is now no hope of finding survivors from the mining accident last Friday, which left 29 men trapped underground. A second explosion. Only Carney and Crane exactly. very confused. Yes. Who yes. can blame him, <laughs> really? Do, do it by numbers, probably. Exactly. All right. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. 19 minutes to 7. Train fares are going to go up again. By more than the rate of inflation, that comes in in January. Average ticket prices across the UK will rise by about 6%. There are already claims, though, commuters will not be able to afford the new charges and will switch instead to using their cars. How many of them are going to get off the train and into their car, then? Do we have any idea? Well, we don't, but of course, if the price of your um, season ticket particularly, and this is really going to affect commuters far more than... Thank you very much, Carol. Let's take a look at this morning's papers, the uh, mining... Explosion in New Zealand breaking too late. So yeah. a lot of them leading on the, the royal wedding plans. Experts, experts say outweigh the side effects. And his girl Friday on the front page of the free pe paper, the Metro, and it's on the front page of the Express as well, the People's Wedding. There's the papers. Not a good day on the stock markets yesterday, yeah. and it seems to be continuing today in Asia. Is that uh, Korea got some yeah, to do with that? Well, they're, they're very nervous types, these, uh, you know, stock markets. Thank you much, Louise. We are expecting that white paper a little later on, but we might be able to get some more details from the Education Secretary himself. Michael Gove will be joining us in just a few moments. A serious day. 
with education because, as we've been saying, a focus on core academic subjects, tougher discipline and plans to retrain former troops as teachers, all part of the government's vision for the future of education in England. Well, critics, including teaching unions, say they're worried about the pace of change and that some budgets will be cut. We've got the Education Secretary, Mike, change that mm. people are quite concerned about. Uh, somebody's just emailed us to say, when is this government going to stop messing with the education system? Every six months they come up with another chicane that teachers have changes and changes to the way uh, exams are conducted as well. Mm. Uh, we had Sir William Atkinson, who you'll know, the head of the, the Phoenix School in London. He came on earlier this week and he said he's, he's concerned about the changes to GCSEs. He likes the modular system. It mm. works for pupils because... Carol's got some weather to chill the blood oh, this yes, morning. It's not nice. Absolutely. We've already got some snow across the north of Scotland. There's snow, as I mentioned, to come this weekend almost anywhere. Mm. And it's the wind as well that makes it feel really Absolutely. cold. Absolutely. It? Okay. Oh, it's raw. Wrap up warm. <laughs> raw, indeed. All right, thanks very Thank much. Thank you. 22 minutes past seven. A wedding is always a momentous occasion for the happy couple and their families, but the marriage next April of Prince William to Kate Middleton will affect all of us. It will. It's on April the 29th. If you hadn't heard already, there's going to be a public holiday to celebrate the event. It's widely thought that'll be good news for tourism and boost the economy. Some people not quite so happy. Phil Lavelle joins us from Westminster Abbey this morning. Morning, Phil. Thanks very much, Phil. It's estimated though it could cost businesses £5 billion. Pounds Indeed. In August, well, it'll be interesting to see whether the impact of tourism mm. and the boost of the economy there balances outweigh out. balances yeah. out. Uh, thank you for your texts and emails on that this morning. In just a few moments, we're going to be discussing proposed changes to schools in England. You heard about them with the Education Secretary, Michael Gove. We've got a former teacher in who made a very impassioned speech about education at the Conservative Party conference, calling for greater power for teachers and heads. Will she be pleased with the new plans? First up, let's get news, weather and travel where you are. What sort of cricket ball they're going to be playing with the They're going to be playing in, in Australia a Kookaburra oh. cricket ball. Well, that could change the whole thing. It's all right. We've been playing with Have them for we? quite some time, but not mastered it just yet. But hopefully this will be it. But we'll like explain that. everything. All right. Football. No, exactly. And it starts at midnight? Midnight. And you're going to be... Tonight. I've got the matchsticks ready. all the details tomorrow morning, <laughs> yeah. you poor thing. All right. Thanks very much. The Education Secretary, Michael Gove, told us this morning that his plans to reform education in England will help eradicate what he calls a two-tier system that fails the poor. What will it mean, though, for teachers and the way classes are run? Will it be effective? We can talk now to Brian Lightman, who's General Secretary of the... They're underperforming. That, is there a that, distinction? That is speech? absolutely right. You know, uh, schools, all schools can improve further. You know, it doesn't matter whether a school is on 30% 5 A stars to C or on 90%. They can all... Raw. Oh, I know. The temperatures are so low overnight as well. Thank you very much, Carol. I'm just trying to find a copy of the sun because it quite usefully shows you what's going to happen um, with uh, the bank holiday for the royal wedding. So there we go. It means that if you work, you've got these days. Us might like to debate the fairness of every business, both small and large, having to fund an extra staff holiday in the middle of an appalling recession just because two random people have chosen to get married. Is <laughs> it <random> fair? <laughs> Should business have to pay? I have been warned. Back to you. We have. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Now I'm going to meet someone who's uh, got a very special part of people's mm. childhood memories. He became the face of Play School and was a hero for generations of youngsters from Camberwick Green to Dappledown Farm. His work has spanned more than four decades. More than 45 years after his first appearance on children's television, Brian Kant is going to receive a special award at the Children's BAFTAs. Bill went to see him at his home, so we're going to take a look through the round window. Brian, uh, thank you very much for letting us uh, come and see. Thanks very much. Thank you. Amanda Knox is back in court mm -hmm. in Italy this morning. It's almost a year since she was found guilty of murdering the British student Meredith Kircher and she's uh, starting her appeal against her conviction this morning. Yes, Ms Knox's legal team said they will be trying to challenge the scientific evidence against... Bill, thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. Rachel Jones is very happy it's taking very place happy. on April 29th, yes. isn't she? Because it's her wedding on that yeah. day. My fiancé Jordan and I are delighted to be sharing our wedding day with a royal couple. We're marrying... At, I don't know whether I should give... They're marrying in, in Shropshire. Shropshire, just in case people turn up <laughs> at uh, 12 o'clock on the 29th of April and we'll be embracing the excitement for the Royal Wedding in our own celebrations. So good luck to you, Rachel. So good luck. Coming up, BBC News Channel has the latest news from home and abroad. Here on Breakfast, though, we're going to be joined by the former England batsman, Mark Butcher, to talk about the test in Brisbane. Starts at midnight tonight. Chris is already saying he's going to go right through, start watching at midnight, and then mm. report to expecting us. Expecting to be sharp. Sharp. Sharp tomorrow. As attack. Time to get the news, weather, and travel where you are. See you in a couple of minutes.
morning. This is Breakfast with Sean Williams and Bill Turn. Good morning and welcome if you just joined us. Our main story this morning is that police in New Zealand say there is now no hope of finding survivors from the mining accident last Friday which left 29 men. A clip from the, the DVD there and that's a huge hole. How many people yeah. are in there? Uh, it says 10,000 on the back of the DVD. I think it was 9,500, but it's 10,000. Yeah. Got 10,000. And it does look like a stadium. I mean, you watch the DVD, <laughs> no, it looks like big. a rock star stadium I... tour. It's a home crowd, though. I suppose that made it feel. Ooh. Wedge hmm. hairdos. Yes. Shredded, I've still got mine. Shredded fishnets and oversized jackets. The <laughs> items I was very happy to leave behind <laughs> in the 1980s. Yeah, this Christmas, people all over the UK will be rummaging through their cupboards to get ready for the ultimate blast from the past. The new Christmas tour, 80s Rewind, is travelling to various venues in Scotland, England and Wales with a host of iconic 80s stars, including Cool and the Gang, Sister Sledge, Go Western to Pal. Of course, no 80s lineup would be complete without ABC, who's lead singer. Uh, the big quiff. Are you going to be wearing them on tour? Um, a 2010 version, yeah, it's like oh. Star Trek, the next generation. Is it? <laughs> see what you're trying to emulate. Here you are in a selection of ABC's classic hits. <laughs> very much. Thank you for coming in. ABC are performing alongside a number of 80s bands in the 80s Rewind Tour, which begins on the 30th of November. More nostalgia for you. He became the face of play school and was a hero for generations of youngsters. From Campbellwick Green to Dappledown Farm, his work has spanned more than four decades. More than 45 years after his first appearance on children's television, Brian Cant is to receive a special award at the Children's BAFTAs. I went to see him at his home. So let's take a look through the round window. Brian, uh, thank you very much for letting us... And Brian's going to pick up, pick up his special award at this year's British Academy of Children's Awards on Sunday. What a lovely man. Yes. Thank you for all your text messages and emails saying oh, that takes me back and it's uh, my childhood all over again. Spike has emailed in who was a founder member of the Playaway cast. He was one of the musicians and he said he absolutely adored it. And Jeremy Irons and Tony Robinson were in it and mm. Derek Griffiths and Roy Castle and George Chisholm to name but a few. He said it was an absolutely brilliant time. Thank and, you. And uh, our next guest would have been in if only they could have but they weren't quite old enough. But they are BAFTA award winners they are. in their own right.